Hello, everybody, and welcome to another live stream with Hobo with Wood. Tonight is going to be the first in what I was hoping they're going to be a regular scheduled event. And uh, I shared this with my patrons, and now I'll share it with the rest of you. What I'm going to be trying to do, we're going to, it's going to be a little bit of an experiment to see how it pans out. Starting at night. Tonight, we are 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live, Saturday night. Next Saturday, I'm going to be doing 3 p.m. Why 3 p.m.? Well, because that'll be 8 o'clock in the U.K. and over in Europe and many countries over there. So I've a lot of different viewers who've been catching the replays but not able to participate in the live streams. So I'm going to be alternating Saturday. So I'm going to be doing 9 p.m., because, you know, because at, at 9 p.m. now, it's 8 in Pacific time. So it's not too late here and it's not too early there. So I'm trying to accommodate as many folks as I can. So every other Saturday, I'll be at 9 p.m. Every other Saturday, I'll be at 3 p.m. And if that gets to be too much of a mess or, or there just isn't enough viewers at the 3 p.m. time slot, then I may just go all to 9 or I, we'll see. We'll see how, how it shakes out. But I'm also going to be doing my regular weekly videos showing what I've learned and what I'm working on. And then we'll go over that and recap the week on Saturday and share ideas and projects. So we got 91 folks here already tonight. I welcome each and every one of you. I'm so glad to see so many familiar names in the stream. I was watching the comments as I was getting ready. And I see we got, we got the... The weather forecast, or the, the the yeah, the not the forecast, but the weather information from pretty much everybody, uh, and the one that's the most uh, nail biting, anticipating comment of all was Craig's still waiting on his thirty watt. Been waiting on it. It's supposed to been there between ten and three, and and he's in Florida, so he's at the same time I am. It's now six hours late, and he's still waiting. Yeah, it's uh, that's a frustrating thing uh, when you're expecting something and you're ready, and you're ready, ready. Where's it at? Where's it at? And it just ain't showing up. Can't get good help these days. You can't. Um, and Brandon asked, "Hey, when are you gonna get your Google Map and see where everybody is in the world?" Well, you know, I started that on uh, Laser Makers Realm, and it never really went anywhere. I'll probably do that here. Uh, I know Clack does it. And and honestly, whenever I seen Clack and Steve doing it, that's what gave me the idea to do it for LMR. And I said, we'll see. And uh, it was, it's kind of interesting to see. And and uh, if Clack, if you're out there watching, uh, you do have a viewer in Nevada. He hasn't logged his location in yet. And we need to smack him in the back of the head. Because he's regular on your channel, he's regular on my channel, and that's Jerry from 3DHP. He's in Nevada. So, Jerry, if you're catching this, you need to go on to Clacks and log in so he has you in his map for Nevada. I think he said that was the only state he didn't have. So, uh, I'll get that going for my channel as well. Uh, let's see here. Because it is kind of fun to see. Oh, and speaking of that, and that map will be shared uh, on the the Facebook group, and I've got an official Hobo with Wood group on Facebook. And I encourage everybody to go over there because I've had a few people comment on you on the YouTube channel about they wish they had a way and even send me emails. I get, a, in fact, Russ, if you're out there, I mean, Russ is filling up my inbox with his project, says he's coming off the laser with them. Uh, the best way to share your projects with me and with everybody so they can see what you're doing and how you have manipulated the files and making them truly unique and your own. And they don't have to be my files. It's your creations. Share them on the Facebook group, which is Hobo with Wood group. And I'll put that link down here in the comments. But go join that. And that way you can post and share your builds and your designs and it, whether they're you know off of my designs or not. Um, let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see, you got a question here. If time permits, can you also show an easy way to get champ for corners? You, you, are you talking about radius? A radius on the corner? Is that what you're talking about? Or an angle? Instead of a radius, you want them uh, at 45 degree angles? 
Let me know exactly what you're speaking of there, Jeff. Uh, and we're going to go over a few things, and I'm going to go really quick tonight. I'm going to try and keep this limit. In fact, I'm going to set my timer right now. Huh? So I don't have my phone muted, but I'm going to set it for 90 minutes. Start. All right. So we got 90 minutes. We're going to try to cover a lot tonight. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with the haze and the highs and the hoo hoos and the hoodie howdy howdy ho hoes. Uh, I'm just glad to see somebody. Well, we're up to 114 viewers. You guys, be sure and hit that like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm, I'm just curious. I scheduled this live really early today. So did did you guys see a notification much, much earlier? And did that, did that help? Uh, and also by joining on the Facebook group, Hobo with Wood, the Hobo with Wood group, I post those notifications in there too. So if you're getting notifications from your Facebook and you or and or YouTube, you'll get those live stream uh, notifications as soon as I put them out there. Uh, let's see here. All right. So I have got down to the bottom of the comments. All right. So what I'm going to go over tonight, I'm going to re recap real quick. Let's see. In fact, let's go over to the thumbnail. Ba, 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 automatic switch. Not that one. That's the Roly. And we're going to talk about the specs on that. I upgraded the uh, my Roly today to the 30 watt. So this is the thumbnail that was posted. You know, updated my 30 Rolly to the 30 watt. Designed corner accents for pop. And that's what I did here on this cross. And we're going to talk about that, this file and how I designed it. I made this mostly out of scrap wood. Uh, and it turned out really nice. And I found something tonight, right before going live, that I was like, wow, uh, that's going to be cool. All right. So, uh, and then also how to design light burn friendly boxes using boxes PY. Now I'm going to minimize this and get it out of the way uh, because I will lose track of what's going on. And oh yeah, I forgot to talk about that. Um, but uh, sometimes, and it, I, I don't know how many of you guys bothered watching it, enjoyed watching it, or had the opportunity to watch it. But even back when I was a kid, I used to get so much enjoyment out of watching Bob Ross and that big old head of hair painting his happy little trees and the happy little clouds and but the one thing that I learned from watching him is happy little accidents. I mean sometimes some of the best ideas come from happy little accidents. And that's what happened tonight. I was getting stuff laid out and ready to go live and I was like Oh, wow, that looks good. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And so Jeff said, uh, yes, angles, not radius. Uh, yeah. And I can show you that after the fact. And if we don't get to that, if I forget it, ring, ring up. Because I'm going to try to keep this 90 minutes. So we're going to go and go pretty quick. Uh, and, I, and if people are still here after 90 minutes and still want to go over stuff, we can, but you know, uh, you know, because last time was we was pushing three hours, and I just I want to try and get a try to get a handle on this. I'll talk to you all night, but we need to try and rein it in somewhat because people people don't turn in tune in for a three hour replay. All right, uh, so let's talk real quick about the Roly update. So I got my thirty watt module in today, and. I was wondering about how much trouble it was going to be to install and what all was going to have to be done. So if you have the uh, 1020 out there now and you've been thinking about doing the 30 watt update, if you've been maintaining your module and doing the proper cleanings with it, you've already done all you need to do to update the module. Because all you do is take the four mounting screws off, the two on the top and the two on the bottom, Pull that off, and then the 30 watt bolts right up on top and, and changes out, and it's ready to go. Now, the biggest thing that I learned from doing that install, though, the focal gauge appears to be the same within a 
a hundredth of a millimeter. So I think that and that hundredth of a millimeter is probably just a difference in production. So the, the focal gauge is the same. And when I've been using my uh, 10 watt and the 20 watt module, and even when I had the MK1, when I was focusing and I'd use my focus tool, I would actually lower the laser down to here on the module. And if you look close enough, here and here is the same. If you focus to the uh, to the cone or to here, it didn't really matter on the 10 watt and 20 watt. You can't do that on the 30 watt. The 30 watt, the cone is larger and sticks down further. And your focal point on the 30 watt is the cone, not the bracket. So if you update it, and you've been in the habit of going here on the bracket, now you know, don't do that, it won't work. But something else I've been flooded with about the conversation I had last week about the differences in the kerf and by rotating it, my product 45 degrees on the material on the laser bed, 45 degrees, I wasn't really clear uh, to some folks that it didn't quite set in on why I did what I did. So today, whenever I was looking at the specifications on the Roly and what they say the spot size is on each of the lasers, I say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to create a physical representation of this and it will better help you understand what I did to get a more uniform curve. And this is for those that are really playing, dialing in that curve and or those that are doing inlays. If you're doing inlays, then you really want to know what your curve is. And, and also, we're going to talk about how the, the, the laser comes to a point. And then it actually starts going back out again. So let's jump over here to the Roly Automation page real quick. And I'm going to show you this. And then I'm going to show Joe your own light burn. And then we're going to move past this and start talking about that next subject on there. But we get over to the Roly Automation page. And then this is from Roly their spec comparison, they have on here their focus spot size at maximum power for each of their individual lasers. Now for the 10 watt, which I don't even think you can get just the 10 watt anymore. It was 0.06 by 0.14. And that was at max power on 10 watts. For the 20 watt laser, max power, so 20 watts, the spot size would be 0.24 by 0.12. And the 30 watts even bigger, 0.35 by 0.22. And that's, you know, in millimeters. If you switch it down to the 10 watt size, it's not half of the max power size, but it is smaller. And that's your spot size up there. But what I've done is I've gone into Lightburn and I've created a representation, not even a, a representation. I created these exact spot sizes in Lightburn. And let's jump over to Lightburn. So this is the 10 watt spot size. This is the 20 watt and this is the 30 watt. So you can see there what I, what I was saying. They have a difference in their X and Y kerf. Because if you think of this as a saw blade, when that's coming down the Y cutting, that's how thin that, that cut's going to be. But now when it goes to move across it and cut on the X, then it's much, much larger. So you have a, a problem with having a uniform curve. So what I did in order to make a more uniform curve, if you, and it doesn't matter which one of these you do, we can do it to all of them. If you take this spot size or this that laser beam, and you rotate it 45 degrees. Now, if you look up here at the width and height, it's uniform. It's 0.141 and 0.141. The height and width is the same. So now, as it moves across and cuts, it's going to be the same as it goes across the X, and it's the same as it goes across the Y. Well, you can't physically rotate the laser beam on your laser. And it doesn't matter if you're using the Roly or an Atom Stack or a uh, Comgro or any of those others, they all have a rectangular spot size. 
And as of right now, I don't know of any way you're going to rotate your laser beam on your gantry. But what you can do, and then just to show you, we rotate all these to 45 degrees. Rotate. Now, when you look, that's 0 0.403, and that one's 0 0.255, and they're uniform. But what you can do is if you take and you've laid out your 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 design, like I, I will have a 300 by 300 millimeter uh, tool path on my design because that's how big my plywood is. I put all of my pieces on here that I'm going to be cutting out. And then if I want to get that 45 degree cut, I select that entire thing, rotate it 45 degrees, and I put my material on my honeycomb on a 45 degree cut, just like that. Now I've laid it out initially normal so I can get the maximum usage of my material and not have any waste. But now when it goes to cut this rectangle or this square out, there is no cuts on an X or Y movement. That's moving up on an angle and down on an angle. And that's going to give a much, much more uniform kerf. And that's how I was able to get around the headaches of having these really crazy size curves dif differentials. Now, this over here is a visual representation of how your laser actually comes to be. Whenever they look at uh, here, there's your focus spot size, focus spot size. That right here is what they're talking about, where it comes in to its optimum focal point. So the more out of focus you get, either pre-focus it or sub-focus it, pre-above focus or sub-below focus, your, your beam is going to get larger. And I mentioned this just for a brief second because I have been doing some inlays and playing with inlays. And what I have found, and, and when you're doing inlays, the object or the, 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 your goal is to have as small of a gap as possible between your pocket and your inlay. Well, what I have started doing is for the piece that is going to be the actual inlay, I flip it. So if it's going to be script, and that's going to be way too big. Let's put because I'm dealing with micro millimeters here. Let's put that down to one. We'll put it down to 0.25. All right. So if I'm going to do script inlay, I'm going to type out whatever that script's going to be. I'm on. And that's my inlay. I flip it. And I cut out the reverse because. That laser beam, when it goes down and cuts, it's actually going to have a little bit of a taper to that cutout. And so the 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 what will then be the top of my inlay is going to be ever so slightly wider than the bottom of it. And that's going to help eliminate that gap in the inlay. And if you don't believe that your laser does this, next time you cut out a project on your, your laser, and I don't care whose laser it is, Next time you go to cut out a piece, and the thicker the material you have, the more noticeable this is. But you've got your material laid on the workbed, and you cut out a design. Even if it's just a simple square, it doesn't have to be script, any design. Uh, well, it would have to be something that you could try it on a square. It would have to be something that you can flip and lay right back down in its pocket. When you try to flip that cutout and put it right back in, it don't want to fit down in there quite so easy if you have everything focused right because it's going to have a taper on your cut it it's going to it does and like i said the thicker the material the more noticeable it is all right so uh and now uh well let's see actually yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to light burn real fast and show you i'm gonna undo all this and get back to those spot sizes All right, so there are the, and these are actual dimensions of the spot size that Roly gives. It's 0.16 by 0.14, and the 30 watt was 0.35 by 0.22.
But this is a, an actual size. But now we scroll out <laughs> and look at our actual work bed. Now you 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 can't you can't see that. We get rid of that. Uh, So we're talking about teeny tiny spot sizes. And so it's really on when, you, when you're doing boxes, and I bring it up because we're going to talk about boxes and boxes.py, and there's a burn correction in boxes.py that you can put in there that will actually take your kerf into consideration so you don't have to do it in light burn. But if you don't know what that burn correction is, then you can't put it into boxes.py. And depending on how you do your cuts and how you lay out your wood, your kerf is going to change. And, it, and if what I showed you in the last live stream, your kerf is going to change from one material to the next. It's not always the same. Uh, so let me get rid of all of that and go bye-bye. And now I'm going to look real fast. All right. Uh, Tom, thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Greatly appreciated. Uh, PC, uh, show how to do a money bank, please. A money bank, uh, like a coin bank. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a basic box tonight and, and how to use this boxes.py. If you've not used the box generator, boxes.py, it is an, it's an okay box generator and there's a lot of different things in there you can do with it and you can even create a file and download it as a light burn file but it ain't light burn friendly and i'm going to show you what to look for how to fix those things so that you can you i don't use it much anymore myself at all because i'm i've gotten proficient enough to where i can create my own and fortunately my stroke riddle brain still allows me to see the, in, in, in my mind's eye, I can see the three-dimensional project as I'm laying it out in light burn. So I don't have to use CAD or, you know, any of that stuff. I can actually see how it's going to go together as I'm designing it in my head. And if you're not able to do that, then using these box generators can be your best friend, but they're not light burn friendly. But I'm going to show you the pitfalls of them and how to get around them in just a couple minutes. So you, if you're wanting to do boxes, piggy banks, that kind of thing, learning how to do this tool and what the corrections you need to make, then you can make any of the boxes you need to make. Uh, bah, bah, uh. So I have seen Bob Ross on PBS at the dentist office, and I have learned a lot from just watching his show. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that man's natural state is just laid back and mellow or if he smokes a big old doobie before he went on camera every time. But that man was just as chill and laid back and happy. And even when he got excited, you couldn't. Oh, look, it's a happy. His excited never went much more above. But I love loved watching him. I can't paint. I'm lucky if I can draw a straight line with a pen and a paper. Uh, I can do well with the computer graphics, but I can't draw a lick. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, Carl says it would not help on a circle. It wouldn't. Uh, it's going to help some. Uh, it's, but when, when I brought this up because we're going to be talking about box generators and when you're cutting boxes, you're not having a lot of circles. Uh, but uh, on a circle, yeah, it's going to it's going to help a, a little bit because that probably wouldn't make much difference at all. Because when you're doing it in a circle, it's kind of moving on a, that radius anyway. It's not going to be using that same dot size. So, but kerf is not an issue with a circle. Kerf is only an issue when you're putting boxes together. And you've not miss, missed much, Jason. Not at all. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And Dale's asking, do I have video on inlays? I do have some videos out there on inlays. Uh, just You might even just search in my uh, little magnifying glass on the YouTube. Just search inlays. And I, I work a lot with hardwoods. I don't, when I do inlays, I don't use veneers. 
uh, they're they're too tough for me to work with. I did see a really cool video the other day, though, where the guy, you know, veneers even, you can get real thin veneers and they're, you know, floppy, flipping, they're raising up, bubbling up and all kinds of stuff. But the coolest trick in the world I've seen for cutting veneers with laser, take you a small pane of glass out of a picture frame and just put that picture frame glass right down on top of the veneer. And that pushes the veneer flat to the honeycomb and the clear glass, your laser, your diode laser is going to go straight through it and just makes a perfect cut of the veneers. But I work with hardwoods and eighth inch hardwoods and I do a deep pocket and press them in, glue them in. Um, last week you showed a puzzle site. What's that URL? Uh, I don't have that handy right now. If you go back and look, I think I put it in the comments uh, of the the video. Uh, if not, you may just have to uh, email me at hobowithwood.com. Hobowithwood at gmail.com. Hobowithwood at gmail.com. If you don't see it in the comment section of last week's video, let me know. Richard says, so if you rotate your wood on the laser bed, yep. And rotate the file itself in Lightburn for curves and not rotate the file itself. Well, I've got the file on. Yes, you rotate it all. I've got I've got everything laid out on a 12 by 12 piece. And I'm and that's how everything's designed. If you get any of my files, you bring them in, you'll see a lot of, of tool paths on my designs. But everything's laid out in that tool path. I get it all positioned right, and then I'll rotate every bit of that. 45 degrees and then the laser is when i'm cutting boxes because then it's not cutting out a straight line on an x or a y everything's at an angle now and that helps but yes rotating but if and and that and again i reiterate guys doing this is only going to help you with kerf and the only time that kerf is really a problem is when you're making boxes you know, or, yeah. Uh, wouldn't putting a painted glass on top of the veneer change the focus of the laser? Uh, you, if you, you can, yes, it, it could, if you don't want to focus to the glass, you want to focus to the, the level of the veneer, but veneer is only what, 16th of an inch thick, or, you know, they're, they're super, super thin. And if you, as long as you ain't getting a quarter inch glass, then, you know, it's not going to be a problem. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, the space between the laser and the material. Yeah, I mean, it's it's negligible. Uh, is this issue only for diode lasers? Which issue? Are you talking about the kerf? No, I, th I think all lasers have got a rectangular shape. And, and you'll just have to look at your manufacturer's your specification from your manufacturer to see how much of an issue it is. But I think all lasers, I think come out and it might be only diodes because guys, I'm not a technical guru. I don't know who have this. This is just what I've learned from working and observations. No one's trained me. No one's taught me anything. This is just like when I, I last week, I did a bunch of curve test and showed you how it, this curve works one way when I cut it out on the X, but then when I rotated everything and cut it out on you know a Y, it the curve was different. So, and the way they focus, the way they come, um, I don't even know what that fancy word accumulator. They combine multiple diodes to create all the power, and when they do that, they're having to focus those through mirrors and lenses, 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 and it ends up coming out slightly rectangular. With the CO two, it's one laser beam coming out, it might actually be more round. I don't know. Yep, Jack in the shop just said that. CO2s are round. See, I don't, when I think about them, I can kind of process it and figure it out. But no, it's, it's the laser, the CO2 laser is one laser beam and it's not having to be focused and, you know, combined with others. So, uh, Jack says, not perfect, but round. Okay. Uh, what is the thickest wood you've cut with the new 31? All right. that's. And I'm going to answer this question, and I'm going to move on to the next subject. 
I don't, my first laser was a 10 watt. I've had, I do have a five watt now. And I've got up to the 30 watt, but I've also got the Monport CO2 and the Monport CO2 was actually my second or third laser because when I was designing with my 10 watt diode and I was trying to cut 4.7 millimeter plywood from Lowe's. And at the time I was using a machine that worked in millimeters per second. And that's what I learned. And in order to cut that cheap birch plywood from Lowe's, I was having to move at like three or five millimeters a second. So five times it's 300 millimeters, or that's a minute rather, millimeters per minute. I don't, I get them all confused now. Three, yeah, three millimeters a second or five, three and 300 millimeters per minute. There we go. And it might take three or four passes to even do that with that five watt. So I went to that bigger CO2 because I was tired of waiting. So I, I, need, I, need, I need more power because I need speed. I didn't want more power because I needed to cut bigger stuff. I wanted more power for more speed. Um, if you're needing to cut half inch material, then I don't know that that's what you, the, because what I just showed you the representation of the laser beam, the way it works, it's an hourglass shape and you're not going to get a really good cut out of really thick material because of the focal point of that laser. If, and, it, if you look at some of the guys out there who have done, you know, three quarter inch material or one inch material, it, it might cut halfway through it or the majority way through it. But the last half of it, it's burnt all to pieces. It's not a usable cut. Um, so for me, the purpose of more power is more speed, not more cutting ability, but more speed. Uh, if you need to cut really, really thick stuff, that's what you need to solve for. <laughs> Not because you know the laser, uh, and this is my opinion. The laser is for for doing delicate precision work, and you're not going to get a precision cut when you're trying to cut you know half inch, three quarter inch material. Uh, you can get a you know maybe maybe half inch is kind of pushing it, but you start getting bigger than that. I, I don't. I wouldn't do that. Uh, all right. So now. Uh, and Jack said for thicker stuff, you need a bigger lens. And that's, and I'm guessing you're talking about CO2 there. Uh, yeah. Jack says four inch lenses versus a two inch that comes on most CO2s. Yeah. And I don't, I don't even turn my CO2 on anymore. Only time I turn my CO2 on now is when I need to do acrylic because I can with the, especially now that I just got this 30 watt, Anything that I need to cut now, I can cut out at a speed that is that I'm not too impatient to wait for, and I get precision results. All right, what was the next thing on the thumbnail? Uh, oh, the design corners for accents on pop. All right, I'm going to show you these, and then I'm going to show first. I'm going to show you how this design even came to be, and this is where I said a minute ago. I said, "Oh, happy little accident." So I had up here behind me last week the cross that I did off of Rich's design, the Louisiana hobby guy. He had a design, has a design on his website, uh, the Lord's Prayer. And I did a take on that and did an amazing grace. Well, that's these files. And... This is, you know, a stand up and got a little base it sits on. And I've done multiple configurations of that and different size bases and things like that. And I said, you know what would be neat is to have this cross within a cross and then have it as a as wall art. So I did uh, just that. Let me see here. Let me get this. So that's Rich's design. Uh, a lot of work went into that, making that and putting that, that together. But his had a little uh, tab on there that 
snapped into uh, a base as well. Well, I eliminated the tab, cleaned it up, and then mounted that flat within a cross, on a cross. And if you can see, it's actually elevated off the wood. The amen is sitting proud and floating on top of the other layer. And I did that with just using an offset of some of the letters glued to the back of the letters and then glued that to the face. But this particular piece I did here is two pieces of the four and a half millimeter birch plywood from Lowe's. One's the solid back, <laughs> made my own keyhole hanger put on there, but it's a solid back and then a, a offset of the same birch and that's a walnut stain put on there. And then this is just plain three millimeter birch with a three millimeter backing on it. And that elevates it off the rear surface, gives it some extra depth and a really neat look. But when I created this offset, there's a lot of waste that come out of there. And I said, okay, well, we don't want to waste anything. So how how do what what am I going to use that for? And I said, I'll take my amazing grace cross and put it on there. And so I took the same thing. A lot of you have already got this amazing grace cross, the file from hobowithwood.com. And I just took the tab off in the design, went into node editing and edited that tab off. Same thing, it's floating. And when I first put it together, I was like, just the, the amazing grace on the walnut, it looked good, but it was a little bit naked. So what can I do to make it look good? I didn't want to create even more waste by doing another full offset around this and then have another cross. It's another smaller version. It's a waste. So I grabbed this same piece of four and a half millimeter birch that was waste. And in this area here of, of the cross, I cut out, I went into light burning. We're going to, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how I designed these. And I designed all these corner pieces to glue on there to kind of frame up around the cross. So this is waste. These corner pieces are waste. And this was one piece of three millimeter birch. And the happy little accident. Because I put this together kind of like, okay, well, I, 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 that looks good. <laughs> Tonight when I was getting ready, I did this and it's like, oh, wow, that looks even better. If I would have taken, and this is my opinion. See how much better that looks if those, those accent pieces were actually moved in off of the corners? Having that extra... Uh, buffer around the sides there move it. those accent pieces me that pops even more if that was all one piece you know getting that lined up right and moving them in you could create a gauge to where you could get the alignment perfect but by moving those in from the edge those accent pieces oops look a thousand times better so all that's out of waste now we're going to jump into light burn and I'm going to really quickly show you how I created these real simple deco art deco looking corner pieces. And I knocked over Cupid here, put Cupid back up. If Cupid can aim, so can you. Ladies, that's for all you hang in your bathroom for all your 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 fellows. So let's go over to Lightburn. Actually, you know what? Let's look real quick. Questions. There's a question mark. Nope, that's not a question. There's a question. No, yep. Amazing Grace Wall Art back is very shiny. What did you use for this finish? Larry, that is my uh, Rust Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. And the shortcut for that is. Uh, HoboWithWood.com 3X Glaze. And that'll take you straight to the Rust-Oleum. And the funny thing is uh, about the Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze, it's hard to find. 
the big box stores will have it for five seconds and then it's gone. They don't have it anymore. My local Ace Hardware, I went there, asked him to get it in, and his Rust-Oleum rep said that he could not get it for him. So it, it's really funny about where you can even find it. But Amazon's got it all the time. And that's what that website will take you, or that link will take you to, hobowithwood.com, 3X Glaze. And I'll put that in here real fast. Uh, HTTPS, hobo with wood dot com slash 3X Glaze. Uh, and it's tricky to use. It takes some practice and trial and error. That's probably three or four coats, and I let it dry for at least half an hour or longer between coats. And the first coat kind of goes on really light, and you get the, the raising of the grain. You sand it down. Second coat kind of goes on light, and you sand it down. The third and fourth coat goes on heavy, and it just looks like it's, you know, you know, quarter inch deep when it's done. But it takes time. Uh, how did you get the 30 watt module from Roly? I thought they did not have them as an upgrade on alone. People. <laughs> uh, does he not have that on there as an upgrade alone? Switch, switch. Um, products, lasers. Uh, I'm just curious. 30 watt. I don't, that I don't know. I really don't know if they did or didn't. Uh, but, uh, and full disclosure, you know, we, on the other channel, we both of those guys had 30 watts, and I never got the 30 watt. And uh, Q reached out and said, "Hey, you know, if you need the 30 watt upgrade, let's get you on board with everybody else." And he sent me one, so that I was on the same playing field, and and I could talk about the difference between the two. And in the first brief te or first few tests I did today, um. I was cutting out the three millimeter birch at uh, 420 millimeters a minute and with at the 20 watt and with the 30 watt, I was able to do it at like five or 550, I should say. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it doesn't double your speed, but considering I went from the 10 watt that I was having to do multiple passes on uh, at 300 millimeters a minute. And now I am pushing 550 millimeters per minute it that's that's a big improvement so with the 30 watt and now you're talking about 40 watts and stuff coming out and even more more powerful diodes i don't see why anybody if you're only working with wood i don't know why anybody would need anything more than 30 watts or 40 watts uh in a way of a diode uh last question and i'm gonna move on to this designing here i thought you could buy the 30 watt module to upgrade a 20 watt but you can't do it to, yeah I, and and I don't know Richard and, and what he might be saying is the availability. Sometimes you know they're sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not. But yeah, you can. Uh, from my understanding, is you cannot upgrade that thirty watt on that MK one, but the thirty watt module is good on the MK two. All right, let's jump over here to Lightburn because uh, we're at fifty minutes now going on it. So we're. Uh, we're not quite halfway through. We're getting getting close, but all right. Auto switch over, light burn. Ba, ba, ba. All right, now let's bring in. Um, we're gonna bring in. Where is that one? Amazing Grace. Uh can't be found. What you do? All right, open. Uh, don't know where I'm at anymore. Um, desktop e-commerce. There we go. Amazing grays cross open, open, open. All right. 
So here is the file that you get when you buy the Amazing Grace file online at hobowithwood.com. Comes in just like so. If you were going to do this outline piece, this is all you need. You don't need any of that. And here are the tabs I was talking about we need to get rid of. So you're going to have to ungroup it because right now it's grouped up with the inner pieces of the end and the engraved lines. So we ungroup it and we're going to go to node editing. And these four bottom nodes, I'm going to draw and select every one of them and hit the letter D. And I just got rid of that. But that's got a little flat bottom on it. I don't want that flat there. I want that one flat, but this one I want it to have the curvature. So I'm going to grab that and just bring it down just a wee bit. And that's all. Now that's ready to go. I'm going to leave this ungrouped and I'm going to select just that outer piece. And I'm going to do an offset and I'm going to do uh, a round offset. And let's start increasing. We don't want to delete the original. We need to keep the original. I'm going to start increasing the size of that offset. And what I'm looking for is a cross that's going to be with as much of a straight line as I can possibly get. It's not going to have to be perfectly straight, but we'll just do 10, 10 millimeters there and say, okay. Now, say, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the four, for the four corners of that cross uh or not the four corners but that's a corner and then extend it i'm going to draw i'm going to draw a bunch of straight lines is what i'm going to do so i'm going to go here i'm going to deselect that cross come on deselect it get my tool path and now get my pencil and i'm going to come in here to right there and i'm going to draw a straight line And do the same thing over here. Get that corner. I uh, just screwed that up because I held the shift key. Undo. Get that corner right there. And uh, there we go. And I'll do the same thing here. And here. And now I can, let me do that. I can select those lines, move them over to where they're in the center there, kind of like that, and do the same thing here. Move those up here. And now I can start, I'm going to get actually my four side pieces here. And what I'm doing now, guys, is a lot of you have already bought the Amazing Grace Cross. So instead of you having to go and buy new files or me selling you a new file to do these framed pieces that you can hang up, I'm just showing you how to modify what you've already got. And it works with this cross. It'll work with Rich's cross. It'll work with any other files you got. So you, you can take and start to manipulate the designs and files you got without having to go and buy new stuff. And you can do it yourself. It's not difficult. Uh, back to here. So now I can, I'm going to get my side pieces, pencil tool again, and I'm just going to come up here anywhere where that A is at and draw a straight line out. Same thing down here. And on the sides. And now I'll move those into place. All right, now I've got a cross with corners everywhere. Now, let's see here. I'm going to go select that outermost offset, go into node editing, 
And I'm just going to insert a node because that's a corner node when you put it in. And I'm going to put it in that corner. Same thing here. Put it in that corner. Now I'll select all of them and hit the letter D. Got rid of them. Now I've already got a node right there in that corner because that's where I started my lines from. So now all I got to do is just select all of those nodes, hit the letter D. I'm going to insert one here. And, and that's actually inserted a curve. So I'm hit the letter L to make that a line and letter L, there we go. And now it's a corner node. So I'm gonna put that in the corner right there. And now I'm gonna zoom in tight so I can see which one of these I'm gonna leave that. Delete, hitting the letter D. And now delete all those. And I can actually come right there on that curve and just hit the L button. And that'll turn that into a corner node and bring that down there. Delete all those. And I'll bring this one to that corner. Delete. Select them all. Delete. Grab that one. Drag it down to this corner. And I hit the letter L right here on this line, and it'll straighten that curve out to a line. And I can delete all them. Hitting the letter D, not the delete button, but the letter D. Bring that one over into that corner. Hit the letter L, make it a line, get rid of all of them. And I'm going to bring that in here. And now you see that one's kind of all mixed up. Doesn't matter. If I delete all these, they're going to go away. Letter L, delete, letter D, letter D, and letter D. And now if I turn off that toolpath, that is going to be a perfect offset in the shape of an angular cross for that design. And it's done specifically for that design. And now if... All you have to do is select that one and do another 10 millimeter offset of that or whatever size you want it to be. And you've got a perfect frame for like what I did here. That's how I got the dimensions so that it was perfect for this cross. Everything was uniform all the way around by doing that little bit of work. Now, I'm going to show you how I did those real accents really quick not gonna take long to do uh look here at the comments real fast uh okay on down on down on down looking looking if you have any questions about stuff just put a question mark first but i don't see them we're gonna move on moving on all right so now i will take and got that selected i'm gonna do another offset and if you want and this could be a place where you might say okay well i want the the radius of the curves, then you do a, a round offset, but I'm going to keep it corners because we're going to do the corner accent pieces uh, to go on there too. All right. So to say done. So now that would be, uh, and actually, you know, I would probably, if I'm going to do uh, the corner pieces, I'm going to probably just put that one back to a tool path. Turn my toolpath back on. Get rid of all them lines. I don't need all them lines. Delete that now. Clean it up. Oh, deleted the wrong thing. Undo. And one more. All right, because if I tried to put any corner accents on here, if this was actually a cut line, there's not a lot of space here to put any accents on it. So I want my accents to be on out here. So I'm going to leave that as a toolpath, and I'm going to do another offset of this one and say, okay. 
So now that might be the frame that you do for the first cross design you're doing. You'd group those together. You cut that out and you glue it on. Uh, actually, you would take this one, duplicate it, Control-D, duplicate it, move that off to the side. There's your backboard. And we're going to, I'm actually going to duplicate this one and grab one, that one there and group it. There is your frame for that one. There's your second layer of that cross. And now you'll glue in the Amazing Grace cross or the Lord's Prayer cross on top of that. And then the other trick to, do, to remember is if you want to create that floating look, you do these two pieces, the backboard and the outline piece out of the thicker four or five millimeter plywood. And then also this makes it cut out a lot easier and a lot quicker too. cut your crosses out of the three millimeter wood and then use some waste material or an offset of the of the, of the cross and inward offset that you glue to the back of it that you glue down to the backboard. And that raises the face of the cross, creates that floating look, uh, and it's going to cut out really fast out of that three millimeter stuff and a lot cleaner. All right. So back. So there gives you the backboard and the frame for the, the one design. Now, if you've got this right here, would actually be this piece right here, the inner piece rather. So that's the waste. That's the waste material. And if you're going to glue a cross on there, then you got what I had was like, oh, yeah, it needs something. It's a little bit plain. All right. Well, I said, I'm going to figure out a corner to design an accent on here. And I, I looked on Google and Etsy and there's some you, you can find if you go into uh, if you go to Etsy and uh, just Google search. Uh, corner accents and SVGs, you can go and buy and do a bunch of different designs uh, all day long. But in the fun of creating and light burn and, and doing your, it, it's, it's your own stuff. And that's why I say take my files, you know, even though you didn't design this, but I'm showing you now how to take that and start editing the file and turn it into all kinds of projects. And another thing that someone suggested was taking. Uh, this piece and actually putting it behind glass in an in actual frame. Actually frame it. Uh, so there's all kinds of things you can do with this. But let, instead of going and buying everything, learning how to do these little short, shortcuts and make them your own, then it's kind of... It, I have more pride when I say, yeah, I designed that. Uh, so back over to Lightburn. So right now I've got my grid set up in one millimeter grid. And if I were to grab all that for right now and just group it, and I'm going to move this into the corner. There we go. So now I know that I'm working a millimeter in and a millimeter up. And I'm only going to design one here in this corner, and then my, and then it can be duplicated for all the other uh, external corners. But then these internal 90s are going to be modified slightly different. But I'm going to be using the same design to do that. So what I did was just grab my pencil tool, and we're going to go to the red layer, and I'm going to come down here. And just start drawing out a line and come down here to where I'm a millimeter off and a millimeter up. And let's, I can take and cancel that and I can see how, how tall was that line because I didn't bother counting it. I went 14 millimeters. And just for the heck of it, we're going to tell it to go 15. And here, this is how you use your anchor points too, guys. Right now, I've got my anchor point in the very center. And if I tell this to increase to 15, it's going to expand from the center of that line. And it's no longer going to be in the right position. But if I change my anchor point to down here at the bottom, and now I tell it I want it to be 15 millimeters high, 
the bottom does not move. It pushes it up. Now I'm going to put my anchor point back in the middle. So now I will go ahead and draw another line. In this case, it's going to be, uh, we're going to go two millimeters beyond that. So I'm going to come up there to there and come down to two millimeters less than that one. And we'll do the same thing over here. Come up two millimeters and leave it two millimeters shy right there. All right. So I got three lines drawn. And now I'm going to select all three of those lines. Control D, duplicate it. And then can I rotate it and it work? And now I got to mirror it. There we go. I think that's what I want. Bring that in here. There we go. Yep. All right. So now those are symmetrical because all I did was just copy them, rotate them, and mirror it. Now I will select all six of them and I'm going to group those and I'm going to do an offset of 0.5 millimeters. Nope, let's do 0.25, 0.25. Ah, come on now, fingers, 0.25. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to ungroup all of that. And this is the joys. I, like I said, remembering how I did all of that, I'm going to bring that one on out to there, bring that one down and connect them. Get my nodes, put you right in there. All right, so those are all actually connected now in the corners. Get you in that, there we go. But they are two millimeters longer in each direction now I'll select them all, do that quarter millimeter offset, wrong button, stupid, quarter millimeter. Delete. I should have said delete the originals. And I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and draw a square while I'm doing it. Draw a square here. And then that one's two by two. So now I'm going to do one that's four by four. Here. Or three by three, rather. There we go. And I moved that. Didn't want to do that. Now select all of those and do a quarter millimeter offset, delete the originals, and say OK. And if I want to give it a little bit of character, I can come in here and just draw a little square. I got to put it in square mode, stupid. Draw a square here, and do another one up here. That one might be a rectangle. But that quick, I got a corner accent piece and cut that out of waste material. And you could spend time, like here, you should take that and align it to the, uh, well, and it's kind of hard to do there. So we'll draw a, a tool path to come down here to align it. And here, so now I can grab that corner of that square and put it right there and that's going to be lined up symmetrically there and this one you, we might do uh there and come in you know but you you get the idea and you play with it and make your own but you can 
create these things with lines and then use offset. But the trick is design one half of it, duplicate it and flip it and mirror it around. So that keeps the symmetry perfect. You're not having to create both sides of it. Create one side and you just mirror that. Create the offsets, delete the original, and you got a really nice piece. But now for the, that, these are for the external corners. Now what I did for the internal corners, take and put all of that group together, group it, Control D, duplicate it, rotate it, and then I would I moved it up here into position. And said, okay, that's not going to work like that if I want to keep the same spacing. So I grabbed that and put my spacing where I wanted it to be, like so, and then ungrouped it all. And then just start modifying it as I needed it. And that's still too tall. That's space right there, but I need to move it down to here. There we go. And then put that in node editing and just simply move that to there. Move that one node in right up there. And now there's a piece that would complement the looks of that piece and it's an internal corner. Pretty cool, huh? And then from what I said uh, earlier, what I noticed, I put those others where they were just about a millimeter in from the edge. It, to me, and this is my opinion, it looked so much better if those were about like that. And of course, you could you could uh, cut you out a gauge or a guide that would help you know where to align those to the corner and get the proper placement, but that looks so much better. Okay, now uh, switch, switch, switch. So now you've seen how I quickly created those, and and I went through it really fast. If we're at, uh, we got another. We're at an hour in, so we got another half hour left. And what else was that on there that I was one? Oh, we're going to, real quick, we're going to, in the next 30 minutes, we're going to look at boxes PY. We're going to get a lot into this episode in 90 minutes. So I'm not stopping for a whole lot of questions. Uh, I'm going to, after we do boxes PY, we can go back and I can look at other questions you might have. So uh, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going back up real quick. Uh, just looking for questions. All right, there, there's where the last one was. Do you ever use full screen crosshairs as a pointer? Really works good for drawing straight lines. Uh, they don't have that yet, but it's coming on 1.5. And you might have seen that. 1.5 beta is out, but they haven't released 1.5 yet. And until they release it, I don't want to bother with it because I don't want to mess with because if it's still in beta, then they're probably still addressing bugs. Uh, so I'd rather they just wait. They feel like they've got all the bugs out. But 1.5 and is going to have those where you can pull in. And yeah, that's going to make what I was just going through a lot easier. A lot easier. Uh, in, in fact, uh, yeah, Royal says if you had 1.5, it works amazing, but it's not out yet. Yeah, like you you can go get it, but I and I I don't want it yet. Until they release it, I don't want it. Um making a timestamp for the replay node editing by the master hobo. I hear you, beauty. Uh I if you haven't watched it, I do have a a video is dedicated strictly to node editing that I just released a couple, uh, what, a week and week and a half ago. So, and it's worth the watch if you really want to get into node editing. Uh, and I make it look easy because it is easy. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by none of it because if you do something and it don't work, you got that magic button, undo or control Z. And, you know, don't don't be intimidated. 
you know, I've learned, I learned all this by watching YouTube videos like you're watching now. And, and I'm in here every day and I'm working and playing and testing, but it's just, I've learned it by experience, but don't be intimidated by it. I never used any of the software like this until, uh, Lightburn. Lightburn is the first software that I've ever used like this. And it was a little bit intimidating initially, but don't be scared. Don't be scared. Um, Robert, do you have a problem with magnets hitting the bracket for laser on the 1020? I never had any issues, uh, but I take those into consideration whenever I'm framing and doing my stuff. You, you just you have to think in advance, and then if you've got low profile, but if you're using the really tall magnets like I've seen on some of the other lasers, it's an issue. Uh, I, <coughs> the only time I use magnets is when I've got some material that's got some warping to it, and I need to get it flat. And these are hold downs that were designed initially by uh, LA Hobby Guy and 3D printed, and it's got the magnet in the bottom. Uh, Patrick at Light Source Engraving is now printing these and making these available on his website, which is lightsource.pro. So if you don't have a 3D printer and you'd like to get some of these, these are really, really cool because of what, with the way they work, the material is going to snap in up here at the top. So that's all, the only thing that's above your work surface. So if you're focused to here, it's a non-issue. But whenever you're putting magnets down on top of your material, then that's a problem. So this is a much, much better design. Light source. Uh, Lightsource.pro, I think. But Patrick, light source engraving. And I'm, I'm, this is, and this is my stroke kicking in. I just can't remember stuff like that. And it's kind of crazy. Uh, so I'm going to go over real fast. Because I don't want to do a shout out and not have the right information. So I'm going to look real fast at my uh, web browser. Yeah, lightsource.pro. And I'm going to put that in the comments. HTTPS lightsource.pro. And did I do that wrong? I probably did that wrong. I fat fingered it, I'm sure. But lightsource.pro is the website to go to, and he's got those 3D printed magnets, and they do not interfere with your laser because they're uh, only that much above your material. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So going way back to questions. Uh, all right. Um, I want to get over here to boxes.py because I know a lot of you guys have showed up for that. Uh, Pop Pop says he's having sound problems. Anybody else? No. Yeah. Jack says he's got good audio. Uh, Pop Pop or Bordello's having sound problems. Uh, or is it just, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, Oh, no, lost audio. I knew I shouldn't have put an update right now. Yeah, hopefully you get it all straightened out. Uh, I don't see a lot of you commenting. One or two of you might be having some issues. I I don't see any problem registering on my side. Uh, why did you decide to go with the 30 watt? Uh, speed. Speed, baby, speed. Full screen crosshairs are an old function. <coughs> I don't know of uh, a function. Uh, well, you, if you're talking about actual crosshairs that have to do with the mouse, that might have to be something in your mouse settings. Or, But Lightburn is in 1.5 is now going to have the ability to actually, and like I've seen it in other design, I've never used it, but I've seen it where they'll go up in, into the toolbar and click and they can actually draw, drag a line down and then drag one over. And then, and you can pull in as many of those uh, lines as you want to. You can have 20 of them there. Uh, and they're not actually crosshairs. They're just toolpaths. 
So you can drag tool paths in from the horizontal and vertical toolbars in 1.5. Uh, pop pop said no audio. Uh, you might do a refresh on your browser and see. Uh, all right. Uh, grouping and ungrouping just you. So when I was doing it there it was just so I can move stuff around and not because if you don't group it and you grab just that outer piece, that's the only piece that's going to move. And I had those squares in that rectangle that was all in there. So if it wasn't grouped, then you have to be careful when you start dragging those around because you can shift the, the position of those internal pieces or not get them at all. Um, there's lots of different reasons why you'd group stuff. And when and but when you go into node editing, if you if the items are grouped and you go into node editing, you cannot edit the nodes. It has to be ungrouped to edit the nodes. So that's why you have to ungroup them after you've grouped them. So I group them to move them around uh, and then ungroup them to do the node editing. All right. Uh, all right, so I've got a lot more people saying it all sounds good. Sounds good, 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 good. All right, sounds good, good here. All right, moving on, moving on. All right, let's 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 jump over to good. I got to the bottom. All right, one last question from uh, Craig. I just got a notification that said YouTube crashed and it shut you down, but I just signed you back in. Hmm. All right. Well, some of you were experiencing issues, and depending, I guess maybe on your, it might be a regional issue depending on where your server is at. But for the most part, everybody said they're doing good. So hopefully everybody's back because now we're going to jump over to boxes.py. We got about 18 minutes before I hit that 90 minute mark, but we're going to see, and I'm going to try and point out as many of the roadblocks that you have to deal with. And if we go over 90 minutes, we go over 90 minutes. We're still at 161 people watching. And I got a feeling that the most of you tuned in to watch this part of it anyway. All right. So, Let's go to uh, here, new tab, and we get it pulled up here, boxes.py. All right. Now, switch over. So if you have not seen this website, it is a very popular box generator, and if you type in boxes.py, it will redirect you to this festy.info to the slash boxes.py slash. And you, there's a lot of different styles of boxes that you can create in here. And it's a fun tool or, to play with, but it is not light burn friendly. And I'm going to go to the menu. And we're going to go to just boxes and go a simple box. And here's all. And some of these have got uh, images down here on the side that you can see what type of box you can generate. And you can generate all kinds of neat stuff in here. But unless you know these basic roadblocks, this site will drive you absolutely mad. So we're going to go into simple A box. And a couple of things that you're going to look for, and this is this is what we're going to look at, just a simple box. And I, I was emailed earlier this week about doing, uh, was it, uh, e yeah, emailed. They wanted to look at, you know, hey, I'd, I'd like to have a box for thermal labels, four by six or, you know, well, you with once you understand th these roadblocks, you're going to be able to know how to start putting in all the dimensions you need, create all these different boxes that you want yourself and not have to worry about, is it going to fit? Because if you, if you can't see that three dimension, if you if you don't have CAD and you can't see the three dimensional fitment as you're designing it in your head, then this right here will save you a ton of headaches once we know what to do to make it light burn friendly. And that's what we're going to talk about. All right. We're not going to worry about uh, a lid. We're not going to worry about, uh, 
well, we are going to have to look at the settings for the finger joints. You want a 90 degree angle for your finger joints. You want a rectangular style of your fingers. Surrounding spaces. Space at the start and the end of multiple or normal spaces. Uh, the, these A lot of these are going to be dependent on the material thickness. And as I even tell you, multiples of thickness. This, the way I think about it is, all right, if you're, if, and you'll see it in a minute, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what this is once we generate the preview. Uh, bottom lip, uh, edge width, extra length. If you're going to want to make your, if you were going to be working with um, hardwoods and you wanted to sand uh, your, your finger joints smooth and have no burnt edges, then you might would do extra length because that gives you extra material to grind away and get rid of all the burn marks. But if you want to see that caramelized burnt edges, then you do zero extra length. Um, uh, the width of the fingers, all right? So here we're going to do two times the width of the material thickness for the width of the material of the, the fingers. Uh, do you want any play? I don't want any play. Space between the fingers is the multiples of thickness. And I do my space between, thick. and this is all personal preference. This is kind of um, part of the design. What do you want it to look like? Do you want the space between the fingers to be uh, twice the size of the actual finger space, then you would make this four. Uh, and then the width of the finger holes, the multiples of the thickness, the width of the finger holes is going to be your slots. And you'll, you'll see all this in a second. But these are things that you're going to take into consideration for the actual physical design. But the important part is you want to do 90 degree angle on a rectangular fitment. Then you're going to put in what the dimensions of your box are. And this is all working in millimeters, inner width in millimeters, inner depth in millimeters. And for all of you guys who are watching that are not in the U.S., that ain't no big deal because you're working in the metric system anyway. And I'm, quite a few of you here in the States are working in metric system. But for you really seriously old timers who are holding on to that, uh, what is it, the imperial system instead of the metric system. If you don't know how the, how many millimeters are in an inch, real, real simple rule, uh, it, it's, it's 25.4 millimeters equals one inch, 25.4 millimeters. And how I remember that is a quarter, <laughs> a U.S. quarter is 25 cents. And how many quarters make up a dollar? Four. So 25, a quarter. And four of them equals one dollar or one inch. 25.4 millimeters equals one. 25.4 equals one mil, one inch. So whenever you're working in this, you're working in millimeters. And, and now you figured out, and I've told you how I remember how many millimeters are an inch. You'll keep that. Okay. All right. So if you wanted it to be uh, five inches, then if you've got your calculator, this is just my Windows calculator. I'm going to clear that out. So I want it to be six inches. So six inches times 25.4 that's 152.4 and that's the inner measurements so 152.4 and if i wanted this one to be five then i think five inches is 127 but let's take a look clear that out 25.4 times five yep 127 millimeters And then how tall do I want it? Well, I only I only want it to be an inch tall, so 25.4 millimeters. And I want to treat these as outside measurements. I would check that box, but I don't. I want it to be the inside measurements. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uncheck that because this way, if I had a, a six by five millimeter label that I wanted to lay in there, that would give me the room there. I might would increase it at a millimeter or two to have a little bit slop. But then here's your bottom edge types. So these are, the, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, generate one of each so you can see the difference real quick. So this will be a F or finger joint on the opposing side. Thickness of my material is three millimeters. And right now we're going to do this in an SVG. 
And if we do our drop down menu, here's all the different file types that you can download from this website DXFs, G codes, Lightburn. And you can download it in a Lightburn file, PDFs, all these different types. Right now, we're going to leave it in an SVG and you'll see why in a second. And if you wanted to put tabs on your piece when you're cutting it out so that your parts don't fall out, you can actually put in your tabs measurements here instead of having to do it in Lightburn and print out labels if. If they were and had labels on it, say top, left, right side, bottom, whatever, it would tell you what it would label the parts for you. Now, this, this, this is one of the biggest things that is the biggest problem for light burn. It does not put these in here as corners unless you tell it to. The default is loop and I'm going to download one of those or create one of those and I'll create one that has the corners and you'll see why this is a big, big problem. So I'm going to leave this as a loop right now. And this is where you can put in your burn correction. If you knew what your burn correction was and you didn't want to put the kerf into light burn, you could put in your burn correction or your kerf right here. And whenever it created the design, it would create the design with that in the design so it would cut out ready to go with your curve already done but right now i'm going to leave this uh as a loop and we're going to do a, a f finger joint and an svg and i'm going to tell it to generate and when it does it's going to open up a new window and there is that box there's the bottom and here's the two sides now i'm just going i'm going to leave that open and I'm going to go back and I'm going to, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do a light burn file in order to show you the problem with the loops. So light burn, and I'm going to tell it to generate. And what it does is it actually sends it right over to my download folder. I have it, it, it sent it to my downloads. So if I go into light burn, Get rid of all this, delete it. And now I'm going to import from my downloads that one that it just generated and say open. It brings it right into Lightburn and put it on my cut path. I like my red as my cut path. And it looks like that would be ready to cut out. But here is the problem. But these were loops, remember? I didn't do corners. So if we go in real tight and look, it generated a loop right here to create this 90 degree turn right here. And that might be, uh, and, and this is an assumption. I have no earthly idea. This might be something that would be beneficial if you're working with a really high speed CO2 or something. This way it doesn't have to come to a, as, a, as much of a slowdown to make that turn because it just goes real fast and loops around. It might have to do with this, the ability to move at a faster speed. But, Regardless why it does it, Lightburn hates it. So you do not want to create a boxes and uh, create a box and boxes py with loops, and this is the the reason why. But there's a, an, another issue that we're going to talk about with light or with the tabs and fingers and boxes py. And but I wanted you to see this first. So here. We have, and I'm going to, uh, we'll, we're, I'm going to grab this piece right here. And let's take a look at our ruler. And these tabs are showing to be 2.9 millimeters tall. Well, we told it to be three millimeters. If we look at that, there's 2.9, there's 2.9. So if we're going to use our resize slots and tools, and I go edit, let's see, tools, resize slots and selection, the old material thickness is 2.9 millimeters. We just checked it. And we want to change the slot depth. It's not seeing any slot depth or widths or tab heights. It doesn't see any slots or tabs. And this is the biggest problem with if a lot of your box files that you might buy from somebody and you start trying to use them in Lightburn and you need to resize them for your material thickness. And the resize tool is not working. 
Well, if you start zooming in real tight, these are the problems you're going to see. And it's because they used a box generator and, and or a, des, a design that's not light burn friendly. Because when light burns looking for slots and tabs, it's looking for four nodes. And that's all. And those four nodes are going to create in light burn a square. There's a node here, a node here, a node here, a node here. Those, those four making that rectangular shape is either a slot or a tab. So if we go into a real tight zoom on this, put it in node editing so you can see the nodes. Well, one, all right, here's another problem. If I look at that, go back to that. That is the only piece that I grabbed, right? There's only one piece moving around. But it's showing that that's a group. So I need to ungroup that with whatever it was. What, what, what was grouped? If I grab it and move it around, you don't, I don't see anything. Move that out of the way, and now let's try and select it and see if there's any. There's nothing there. But for whatever reason, that single piece was grouped with something that doesn't even exist. But now if we go into node editing and we go in real tight, well, there, the inner pieces are loops. It's only one node, so that's a node. That's a node. But then when we get out here to the corners, there's two nodes there because it has a radius. And that right there prevents light burn from recognizing these as tabs or slots. So you can't, uh, you can't really use uh, anything about these in boxes PY if you want to, if you want to be able to resize your slots and tabs. And you do want to be able to resize your slots and tabs because you can take and design a box that might be a post-it node holder or a, a coaster holder or whatever. And this week you're making them all out of three millimeter Baltic birch, but now you're out of that next week and you've got the design already there, but you got plenty of four millimeter wood over there. You want to be able to resize those slots and tabs to use the wood you got. Well, if you just, if you didn't, if you used this type of file, you've got to go generate a whole new file for the new material thickness because you can't resize it. Not cool. So, Let's get rid of all of this. Get rid of all of this. Why? Oh, because you ain't selecting it. There we go. Get it all. Delete it all. Go back over to boxes.py. Boxes.py. Where did you go? Uh, there. Nope. Wrong one, stupid. There. Okay. All right. So... But now the, the benefit of being able to see these uh, SVGs like this, here I told you I was going to show you the difference in the bottoms. This was a finger joint. Now, I don't like that one that much. Uh, my personal favorite is this stackable bottom finger joint hole. But let's look at this H edge and say gender, and let's put it back to an SVG so we can actually see it until it generate. And the difference between, the, I didn't change anything except for the, the bottom. This was the first box, the F bottom. This is the H. And here, what it's doing is it's putting a flat bottom across there. And then these. this is the bottom of your box and it's gonna snap into these slots here. And so the bottom of the box will be slightly elevated off the, the table. So that's the difference between the F and the H. Now the S is my personal favorite whenever I'm doing box generation or, or it designs. And it says that this is a stackable design, but it's, as it is right here, it's not really stackable because the bottom has these little feet on it. And this recessed area is supposed to be cut out so that if you had a, a box, uh, the top of it would have the the reverse of this, and then you could just stack one on top of the other. But this has got a flat top on it, so there's nowhere for you to actually stack it. But I like this because it gives these little feet on it. 
And then lastly, let's see if we can see the straight edge bottom generate. This one doesn't make any sense to me because it gives me the uh, four pieces, but that doesn't give you a template to cut out the insert for the bottom. And there's obviously there's no uh, fingers for it because there's uh, the flat edge, no fingers, no slots. You're just supposed to put your sides together and then glue in a bottom piece. That one is totally useless in my eyes. Now, you guys may look at it and say, okay, well, I know where that would come in handy, but I don't see it. All right, so there's 90 minutes. We're going to dismiss for 90 minutes in. We still got 150 of you here, and this, I think, is why most of you turned in, tuned in. So I'm going to push on a little bit more and show you how to get by these headaches with uh, boxes.py. So that straight edge bottom to me has no use. The stackable is my favorite. Uh, and then the H is my next favorite. The H is the one that was, had it elevated off the bottom. Now, I'm going to kill all of these SVGs. And if this is what I want, I want that H bottom and I want it for light burn. I'm now going to switch it over to a light burn file, tell it to generate. It's going to send it to my downloads. So now I can go over to Lightburn and import from my downloads folder that last one that just generated. And there is, and I did the H bottom and not the finger, not the stackable. I did the wrong one, but that's okay. For Because for what I'm getting ready to show you, uh, it doesn't matter about the bottom. That's the label. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to put all this into the cut layer because all of those are cuts. Now, if we go in real tight and look, we've still got, I, I did the loops and it doesn't matter because I wanted to show you why it was a problem with the loops and why you should do corners. But because those outer radiuses are an issue, it doesn't matter if you do loops or corners or, or not, unless you're not worried about resizing it ever. If you're not really worried about resizing it ever, if you just do the corners and cut it out for your three millimeter stuff, you, then you're you're ready to go. Uh, but I, being able to resize it is is crucial in my 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 opinion. So what you need to do in order to make these to where you don't have these inner loops. You don't have these outer radiuses. You're going to have to create your own slots and your own tabs. But you've got a design here and a blueprint. You don't have to worry about these inner pieces. Oh, yes, you do. Look at there. Even those have got loops on them. So actually what I would do is I would go ahead and delete that. Go back over to boxes.py. Change that to corners because that will make a difference on those inner slots. And I'm going to go ahead and do my stackable. But the stackable is the one I want. Generate that. Back over to Lightburn. Import the stackable, the one I just did. Downloads. There. There. Now put that on the cut path. And now if I look there, I should have, yeah, no loops. And now I do not have to modify these at all. The only thing I've got to worry about is these pieces here. And I'll show you how quick and easy this is to fix. And I've got looking here at some of the comments. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, left loop. Yeah, that was that was an, an error, and you had to go back and do that. Uh, haven't tried yet, but we'll optimize shapes. Uh, I don't know if optimize shapes. Uh, no, I, I, my, it's been my experience that does not eliminate the loops. And uh, yeah, Ed says yeah, turn off the loops, and I turned off the loops there. But the loops are gone on the outers, and they're gone here. But the problem is. And if we go out here, no no loops there, but I've still got the radiuses on these pieces. 
So if I look at my measure, my rule, how, how tall is that? <coughs> I told it three millimeters, but the reason it's only measuring 2.9 is because of those radius, those radii. So when I try to resize this at 2.9, and these are tabs, it does not see these as tabs, but it's because of those the radii on the ends of those. And here again, it's saying group shapes. I don't understand why it's, I've only got that one piece done. Not guarantee you there's nothing there again. I'm going to ungroup it, grab just that outer piece, move it out of the way. And now with that gone, I should be able to select that whole area and grab anything that's there. And there's nothing there. Uh, so that's another issue. Uh, but still now when I go back to resize tools and slots and selection, whatever, Okay, there we go. Now it's wanting to recognize, or no, it, it's seeing those, but it, it should be tabs. It's 2.9. It's not recognizing them as tabs or slots, and it's because it doesn't have an actual four-corner piece for it to look at. Well, now if I look right here, your shape, the, your selection contains shapes that are not closed. So that could be an issue. So for whatever reason, there was that little crazy piece that it never picked up was whatever was making this closed. Uh, so I had uh, an email tonight where, in fact, this is a good uh, opportunity to show it. Right now, this is in line mode. And I'm wondering if I put this in fill mode, will it show it filled? Because it's not closed, it should not. It should still show it in line mode. Somebody hit me up and said, hey, no matter what I do, if I put it in line or feel, it's still a line. Well, when that happens, the shape is not closed. And this is telling me that it's not closed now. So if I put this in fill mode, all right, it does fill it. But if I go back here to line and go to node editing, and Chris asked how many nodes are start points? One. There's only there's only one node origin node, and if I take this out of uh, that tool, now we'll go to node editing. We should have one bright right there. That green node is my origin node, and there shouldn't be more than one. There should only be one green node. And if it's an open shape, that's most likely where that is going to be open. So I'm going to grab that green node and see if it'll move. And see, there it did. I should not have been able to do that if it was a closed shape. So I'm going to put that back together. And then you can go into tools, edit rather, go into edit. And come down here and you see closed path is black. It's not grayed out. So it's still not closed. So I hit closed path. And now you can go back and you can check. It's still not grayed out. It's still an open path. So it's not wanting to snap together. Well, that did snap together. But why is it still an open path? So there's a lot of issues with using boxes.py. So I'm going to go back. And if we got an open path yet or closed path yet, edit, closed path. All right. Is it a group? No. All right. Got it. All right. Now, I've still got 150 of you hanging around. Now, how I get rid of all these problems? How do I get rid of all these radius? How do I get rid of all those? Well, the loops are gone because we chose corners. I'd simply redo. And, and what I look here is, if, if I've done a rectangular box, then I've got two sides. That's These are identical pieces, and these are identical pieces. If I did a square, then you would have still the same problem. You'd still have two pieces and two pieces because two of your side pieces are going to have slots in them, and two of them are going to have tabs on them. So you're going to have two left sides and two right sides, or Opposing sides are going to be different. 
what I've, I've said, I wanted three millimeter rectangle. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw me out a rectangle that fills up that space. And I'm going to get my nodes. And actually, I might have to convert that to a path in order to better see my nodes. And I'm going to select both of those and bring that right down to the corner. So I've got that at the corner. I've got that at the corner. That's filled up. And now I'll grab both of these and bring it out until it. And actually, the, the height of it don't really matter that much because we can change that with the uh, resize when we resize slots and tabs. But now that I've got that done, I can control D, duplicate that, and just arrow that down and check the distance. And you see that's not three millimeters. The, the distance between the tabs is not the same as the actual tab. So I will select just that one, and I'm going to node edit, grab both of them. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for the actual measurements between these slots and tabs. Now, this is a lot of work, for, but for someone who doesn't know how to create slots and tabs, be able to know and feel comfortable that they're going to build a box without using a generator. This is what you got to do if you're using boxes PY. But it's really simple. Once you've done it once or twice, fast, fast, fast. So what I've done is I've got these two box selector tool. These two boxes. The top one there is the size of my actual tab. This is the space between them. And if I can look right here, the height is 5.803. So all I'm going to do is select this, and I'm going to go to my array tool, and I'm going to create rows. I'm going to go the other direction. And it was 5.803, I think. And just keep creating rows. Scroll out until I can see. I've got all of my need there. And say OK. Now I can get rid of that, select all those, group them, Control-D, duplicate it, rotate it, bring that up here and check. And I'm going to need two more on that side because it's not a square, it's rectangular. But this one, I'm going to need Control-D, duplicate it, and bring it over to the other side. And I will actually just ungroup that, delete those, do another array. This time I'll do columns, 5.803. Say OK. Grab all those, duplicate them or group them, duplicate them, and bring those down here. Now, those are going to be perfect. Those are rectangles. Those are, those are not going to have loops or radiuses or anything on them. Now, if I just grab that piece, go into node editing, and just grab every one of these nodes, leaving the corner node, leaving that node and leaving that node. Hit the letter D, get rid of it. Same thing on this side, leave the corners. And now all I gotta do is grab all of these, which they're already grouped, hold my shift button and select. Uh, actually, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my docking tools because I'm on my work bed. I'm gonna make sure my padding is zero and I'm gonna dock these down. That puts them right on top of there. I'll grab these and dock these up. Dock these to the right and dock these to the left. And now if everything's aligned properly, I should be able to actually just grab 
those four groups and group those together and then hold my shift key and grab that square and weld it. But this only works 90% of the time. Sometimes it don't work perfect like there. Those are all good. Those are all good. Those are all good. But here's, here's one that's going to be a problem. And there's one that's a problem. So I'll undo. And I will ungroup that whole group. And when I know that if it's if that's even a possibility, which it is, you know, maybe a 10% chance, just do them one group at a time. Just weld it and you can check it. Hold your shift button, grab the next one, weld it. You can check it. Shift button. Well, we know this one's going to work and weld it. And then this one, we knew we had a, a couple of them that were being a little bit of an issue. So one thing you can do is first ungroup all these and then tell them to align to the top of each other. And then group them back together and try to weld it to that and see if that took care of it. And that actually made it worse. So we're going to ungroup, undo and ungroup. And now what I'm going to do is just grab them all. They're individual pieces. Uh, I didn't necessarily have to ungroup them, but I'm going to just hold my shift or I'm actually going to hold my control button and my up arrow. And I'm going to bring them in just ever so slightly to where I moved them in to the inside of that square. And I can group those back together. And now hold my shift button, grab that and weld them. And you're going, well, yeah, that welded them all, but I just changed the height of those tabs. Well, that's okay, because the whole reason we were doing this is so that we could use the resize slots and selection tool. If you're still with me, and a lot of you still are, I don't know if it's the same 150 that's been with me for a little bit. There's one more problem you have with Lightburn being able to differentiate a tab from a slot, and I'm going to show you that here. Because right now it's seeing uh, at 2.9 mil millimeters, it's seeing these because I moved those in. These are a little bit smaller than these. That's why it's not seeing them all. But it's recognizing these as slot depth. It also recognizes them as tab height. And it cannot be both. It's either slots or it's tabs. It cannot be both. And what did I say earlier that Lightburn looks for? It looks for four nodes. So if I zoom in real tight, there's four nodes, and that's a tab. But if I scroll over a little bit, there's four nodes, and they say, oh, that's a slot. And so that's why Lightburn gets confused, because it doesn't know that you intend for this to be a tab, and this is not a slot. So in order to fix that, in order to be able to use the resize slots and tabs tool with your designs and know you're not going to have a problem, you got to do this one other thing. You got to add a node. So we're in node editing. And what you do is you look right here, it's the corner. And until you get to where you're really, really proficient and know what you need to add, you might take your pencil tool and grab you a tool line. I didn't want to put the whole thing in the tool line. Go back to there, and I hate that. You have to deselect it first, and then grab your tool. Priorities matter in Lightburn, guys. Priority matters. Tool path first, then select my pencil. Come to that corner and draw a straight line over to that corner. And now, when I select that and go into node editing, anywhere the red line and the tool path overlap, you're going to put a node. You don't want you don't have to worry about it over here on the corner because number one that's a radius and it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter because there's a one node one node and even if that was just a corner node it wouldn't matter you only got three so don't recognize that as a slot or a tab but everywhere else that it overlaps i'm using the letter m and it's going to put a node in the middle of all of those And you do that all the way around. And now when we look at the tools and resize slots and selection, and 
It doesn't see those as tabs in, or slots anymore, but it sees them as tabs. It will only see them as tabs. And we want it to be three millimeters to so tell it okay. And so now you could, if once you go around and edit all those like that, it's going to show you those as only what you intended them to be. Now, the same thing down here, once you've edited all those out, these are going to be slots and not tabs. So you would want to put a node in the middle of this one because if you drew your straight line from this corner to this corner, this is the only place it's going to overlap. Switch. All right. So... Now, I've not heard of this one. Mark Patterson says, I use Gravini box generator and no loops, and I have proper nodes and slots and tabs. I'll have to look into Gravini. I've never heard of that one. I've heard of Maker Case and this one, but I've never seen Gravini. That, and I might, I'll, I'll have to look into that, and that might be something that I educate and share with everybody else, too. Has anybody else besides Mark Patterson used Gravini? Uh, da, da, da. Looking for questions. And Chris says, wouldn't having a find and replace option in Lightburn be good for getting rid of radius problems? Yeah, and it would be even better, though, if... And, and honestly... I, I don't know if the loops and the radius, I'm guessing that was got to be having something to do with the, allowing the laser to move at a faster speed and not have to slow down to make right hand or, you know, right angle turns. That's the only reason I can think that they would do that. But it'd be nice to have that in the generator where it just didn't even make them at all. Uh, question. When you said you made the top layer float, I can't envision what the layer beneath the floating looks like. Would you show me top layer float? Uh, are you talking about in the stacking part? I don't. I don't quite. Unfortunately, because I'm so far behind with the questions and what I'm not not sure where you were at when you asked that. If you're talking about the stacking versions of them. Uh, I can kind of sort of show you that real quick here, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, oh, on the cross. Oh, on the cross. Okay. Uh, I can kind of sort of show you on this one. The back, the backing material was four and a half millimeter birch from Lowe's and the cross was three millimeter. But if you look at the side of it, the profile, that three millimeter is raised up off the surface of the four millimeter wood. And I did that on, on this particular one. What I did was took and just simply did an inward offset of the entire cross and it was offset inwards about three millimeters. So there's actually a support piece behind. If I push on that Z, it doesn't flex inward because there is a small inward offset of that Z that supports it all the way around. On some of my earlier versions, I just put a little dot underneath the G, underneath the E, the A, and it lifted it off of the surface and it gave it some extra depth. But whenever you whenever you see this in person and you look right at it, because that offset is recessed in there, I wish you you, you could see it better on that. Well, you can there we go. Uh, see that part. Oh, my fingers are all messed up right here on the E. Uh, if I can get it angled just right, there's there's a gap there, and you have to look at it from an angle to see that inner piece. So when you're looking at it from here, that's lifted up off there and it just creates a shadow 
in the right light. You don't see it quite so much on this walnut stain, but on on the, on the lighter stain or a natural birch finish, it creates a shadow effect of the cross on the backboard. That's what I meant by floating. Uh, and then here's somebody else. Yes, on stacking. Okay. Uh, over light burn real quick. And I think this is supposed to do this. And I think if you did it with uh, some other settings, but see how the bottom of this is cut out. Well, if you wanted to stack one of these on top of another one, then you would need to have this piece uh, ungroup it so we can see those nodes. You would have to have this same curve up here. So if I just inserted a node, I'm going to show you what it should look like, kind of, sort of. I bring that. I don't want that to be. I want that to be a line. So I'm going to do another insert here and an insert here. Grab both of those and bring that up and then make that smooth. Uh, I didn't want to do that all the way like that. So make that back a line. There we go. And that's smooth and that's smooth. Then this right here is just a real quick, rough representation. Because they would need to mirror each other. So you'd have a curve like this that mirrored the curve up here that would allow you to then stack those one on top of the other. And that's called uh, in, in that box's PY, that's called a stackable box. But that particular version that I that I did real quick didn't have the stackable piece on top. Uh, Craig, uh, is the SVG the most problem-free file to use? No. Uh, the Lightburn file is the most problem-free. But if the Lightburn file isn't available, yes, you can import the SVG into Lightburn and it will convert it to a Lightburn file. Uh, but the problem is if you go to Etsy or you go to any other site, People can create designs in other artwork, like um, Adobe Illustrator, a very popular one, Corel Draw. All they can create all these different designs and artwork, and and save them and export them out and sell them as SVGs. But they're not laser friendly. They might be full of open shapes, or they might have multiple. I've seen some of the AI files, Adobe Illustrator files. When you look at them, they look like they're just a simple line drawing. But then you go to look at them, and they might be 10 or 11 layers uh, of one on top of each other. Um, in fact, I think it was on yours, Craig, uh, I think it was your file that I helped you with, with the, uh, the Florida, one of the very first designs that you and I worked on together, that Florida outline and the seals and all, that was one of the ones that was really problematic. That... When you looked at it, it looked like it was just a simple line drawing of the outline of the state. But when you once you got it into to light burn and started looking at it, it had been 10 or 12 layers stacked on top of each other. And it was a real nightmare. So uh, just because it's an SVG doesn't mean it's light burn friendly. Um, and th that's why I tell people when you buy my files, they are light burn friendly because they were designed in light burn and not imported into. Uh, Okay. And I see the moonshine is still there. Yeah. And when do we get a taste? Uh, if you go to uh, John Schneider Studios, John Schneider Studios, John Schneider is in Boduke. John Schneider Studios is where you can find the access to the revenuers reserve. And they ship it all over the U.S. That's something that baffles my mind because where I'm at, the ABC laws are crazy. But he, I, that that came from FedEx. And you can't just go buy liquor anywhere in North Carolina. But FedEx brought that to the door. Uh, and I've got the original. I'm, well, I'm making my own flavor. That's blackberry and apple pie. I'm making some pineapple. And that's going to be good. Uh, Brad, do you need to rotate the actual material 45 if 
I, I wrote, you don't have to, no. Uh, or just the image in Lightburn for better curve. Uh, I, I thought it was just in Lightburn. You do only have to do it in Lightburn. The reason I do the material too is because I've got my material nested and filling up as much of that square as I possibly can first. And then to make sure that I minimize my waste as much as possible. I've got that all laid out. Then I'll just rotate that whole thing. That way the nesting and the grouping is all right where it needs to be. And I'm going to get the most out of my material. Uh, and that's the re only reason I do it. And plus two, it's real easy uh, with the your ruler on the side when you go to rotate it. Okay, well, this bottom corner needs to be at what if it, they're going to be at the same place on your your rulers. So if it's 10 millimeters here, you want to look for 10 millimeters on this corner. And if it's not, if you're at eight and 12, then you don't have it at 45. Then you just, you know, rotate that down to where, you know, you've got it at 45. And but I only do that so I don't waste any material because when you, when you don't rotate the whole thing and you try to put your design, depending on your design, if you try to put it on the, there and cut it out, then you, I see you get the potential of more waste. That's the only reason I do it. Uh, all right. We're two hours in. We'll look for more questions and we're going to get out of here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. Uh, what's, uh, what she said, uh, judge them says I use a lot of files from Etsy. I have to run them through V carve pro to clean them up. So they are usable. Yeah. They, a, a lot of the files on Etsy are not laser friendly at all. And no one else has said anything about that, that Gravini or whatever it was, that other box generator. Uh, I'm going to have to go back. In fact, see if, if you're still here, put that in there again. I didn't lost that, that name of that, that other box generator. Oh, there it is. Uh, Chris, have you ever heard of Gravini box generator? I might have to look into that. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to go over here to my tab. And I'm going to search real fast because I'll lose that again. G-R-A-V-I-N-I. -I, Gravini. Box generator. All right. I'm going to research that, guys. And if none of you else, no one else has said anything about using that or seeing that. Uh, yeah, Mark says Gravini. Yep. And Jackie, yeah, I've used Maker Case and I didn't like Maker Case. Now, I didn't like the Maker Case actually gave you that. Uh, what is that cam where you can actually spin it around? You can see the actual 3D rendering of the box. That was kind of cool. Uh, but between Maker Case and boxes.py, I've when I've had to, I've used PY more than any. And Jack says, Yeah, he's never heard of it. I've got it pulled up here. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm going to look at it probably tomorrow. Uh, 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 I will email you. Yeah, I got it. I got it pulled up, Mark. Thank you. Chris says, uh, uh, I know I've used Boxes PY as I know you know how to fix the problems. Yeah, I mean, that's me. And that's what I'm sharing with you here. These are, the, you know, it's, it's kind of a simple one to use, but there are problems. But once you know what to look for and how to correct them, it's not that big a deal. All right, 140 of you still here, and I did not give away any files tonight, but for y'all that are still here, I want to give you a thank you. So I'm going to, I'm going to think, uh, do, I know you're still here because I just seen you uh, uh, in the comments, uh, Jack, Jack in the shop, name an animal, any animal. And Chris, uh, no, no, not moonshine giveaway, Jack. Name an animal, any animal. And Chris Gallagher, give me a, uh, give me a number, any number between one and 50. Chris. All right. Jack says lion and Chris, give me a number between one and 50. Are you still here, Chris? 
pie. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> a man ever my own heart mm. all right 27 all right lion 27 uh ba -ba 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 -ba. all right lion 27 and give me just one second, folks. If you're still here, uh, thank you. And I'm going to give you something here. Uh, usage. Product categories. Digital. And general. Expires. Uh, on fourth. And publish. All right, so you guys that are still here, Lion27, and I'm not typing this in the comments. I'm not putting on a banner. It's only for you 140 that are still here and you're hearing this. Lion27 will get you 50% off of any of the files that are on hobowithwood.com. I didn't generate any new files tonight, but if you don't already have the Amazing Grace file, it's on Hobo With Wood, but now you've seen how you can modify it. You can make these little stands like this, or you can modify the design and make them where they're, you know, flat wall hangers. So Lion 27, no spaces, no dashes, no capital letters. Lion 27, I get you 50% off of any of the files on hobowithwood.com. And that coupon is only good until the end of day tomorrow. So, man, y'all ain't supposed to type that in the comments. Because uh, that, that was sh for y'all. <laughs> Because what people will do is they turn they 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 don't watch the show they don't watch the live stream they wait for the last you know, either for the end of it and they'll wait for the replay and they'll scan all the way through the replay they don't watch any of the video and get just the coupon and go get the free stuff and that's why I was doing that one but I didn't say that out loud so you know but now you know now you know don't uh but. Guys, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being with me, hanging out as long as we did. We went a little bit longer than I wanted to. But we're going to try to keep this to about 90 minutes and address questions as we get them. Uh, and let's see, go away. Uh, got my uh, notifications popping up on the way to comments. I can't see everything. Yeah, uh, Ed, uh, coffee bean, th thank you. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ed Cameron says, yeah, you should become a gold patron. It's even a better deal. Yeah, the, the gold patrons get 100% off of all of my files, and it's only 20 bucks a month. Uh, all right, Chicago Bob, I will. I'll do that. Uh, yeah, and Carl, the my, they're going through here fast. Carl says, I'll have to record the 3 p.m. Saturdays. Of course, you won't have to record it. It will be automatically available for replay. Uh, but the 3 p.m. is just so I can try to accommodate those guys over there in the U.K. and Europe, and they can participate in the actual live stream and uh, not have to only be stuck to replays. And we'll see how long that lasts. I don't know how long that – I don't – you know, we got 140, 150 people watching all night tonight. The, the European uh, live stream, I may – be working with half those numbers. And if we are, then I may have to rethink that. But I, right now I'm trying to be as accommodating as I can to as many as I can. Yes. And uh, Brandon, uh, it's every other Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time and every other Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so there we go. And uh Chris says he would uh, if he'd have to win a lotto to be a platinum member. Now the platinum patrons, they're five thousand dollars a month. <laughs> but for five thousand dollars a month, I'm going to come to your house once a month and cook dinner for you, <laughs> and we'll talk about lasers and designing until you're blue in the face. But that's only for the platinum patrons. All right. 
I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you for hanging around. Lion 27. Lion 27 to get you half off anything you want in digital files on HoboWithWood.com. You guys have a good weekend. I'll see you next week in regular videos. I'm going to go check out this Gravini and see what that's all about. Maybe that's going to be the new and everybody that has seen and used boxes PY, we may need to forget about it completely. And Gravini might be the whole next best thing. So I'll check that out and let you know and give you some feedback on it too. So I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you in the next video. And we're going to end this stream and we're going to wait for it to end because I don't know.